Okay, let's just give everybody a minute to just get on before we start. Okay, let's start. Guys, I'm going to share my screen. Um, and I just want to go through a few things on the Google Classroom before we start. Now, there is a task that I, gave, I forgot to give you guys yesterday that you're going to have to make up and do as well. So just be aware of that. If you take a look under lesson five, uh, you'll see it says that you need to complete question 3.3 of the paper two, May, June paper 2017 paper, but only that question. It is a, a DNA profile question. It's a very nice question. I uh, took a look at it yesterday again. I love that question, uh, but I want you to go and do it. Um, and so we will be discussing that on on Monday together with the other work that um, you need to do. Also today, I want you to note that there's a worksheet loaded for you guys. Uh, yesterday, all that I told you guys to do is to draw the diagram on, pay, on protein synthesis, which was on page five of the Mind the Gap book, or you can use the one from my notes. The Mind the Gap one book is very nice. I like it, um, but please, you must have the labels. Also, guys, please do not forget that I need you to watch the videos that I've loaded onto the Google Classroom. So all of these additional videos, I need you to watch them, please. My recordings are also placed there, but all of the additional videos, I'm not going to show that to you in a Zoom. That's a waste of time, your time and my time. I draw, the Zoom is kept for me explaining the work to you and going through the notes with you. Uh, so you've got to go and watch these additional videos. If we were in a normal classroom, I would be showing you these videos on the board before I started explaining. Same goes for lesson six, which you're busy with today. Um, uh, lesson five uh, notes from last time. And then of course, lesson six today, please go and watch those videos. Those animations show it in a way that I cannot show it to you while I'm busy with a live, live Zoom lesson. And so it's important for you to actually go and watch those videos. They do have a bit more detail than I would normally inc um, uh, uh, include or because of caps but it explains it so that you can understand it well. When you are going to study, you'll study from my notes and you'll test yourself from old past papers. For today's homework, except for watching the videos, please, this 2017 paper to May, June, question 3.3. And then there's an old test, uh, a worksheet on an old test that you need to do. But not only do you do it physically on paper, after you've done it on paper, please go into this link over there and complete it electronically. And that electronic version is getting back to me and I can assess how you're doing um, because I can't physically check your books at the moment. So you need to complete that as well electronically, physically and then electronically. I advise you to do it on paper first and then after doing it on paper, then please do it, um, the electronic version. I will not be having a Zoom with you tomorrow because I need you to complete this. And this is going to take you some time. Um, the electronic and the paper version is going to take you some time. 
And so that's what you're going to spend your time in the life sciences lesson tomorrow doing. So I can discuss this properly with you on Monday in Monday's Zoom lesson. As I told you, we're going to go and review lesson uh, six again, protein synthesis again today. And we're going to complete the lesson. Yesterday, we did not complete the full lesson. But this should be not a, not a very long lesson since you have to have some of that time to be able to complete that worksheet that I gave you guys. Now, protein synthesis, ladies and gentlemen. Again, what is required of us to know in protein synthesis? We need to know about transcription and translation. In transcription, I need to know. Sorry, let me just put my phone on silent. There we go. Okay, we need to know the involvement of DNA and RNA in protein synthesis. We need to know transcription. The double helix is going to unwind. Remember, the DNA needs to always unwind before it can unzip. If you swap the two around, you lose the marks for that. Okay, so DNA unwinds and then unzips. Um, how does it unzip? Because the weak hydrogen bonds are breaking between the nitrogen spaces. To form two separate strands, one of the strands will form a template. Remember, this is different from replication. In replication, both strands were a template. Now only one strand is a template. We're busy with protein synthesis. To form mRNA, so loose nucleotides are going to connect to that one strand that acts as a template. They will then connect in a complementary fashion, A to T and C to G. Ah, no, not A to T, A to U this time. Okay, so A connects to U or U connects to A. And of course, on the DNA, it's still T. And so T will connect. That's going to be your RNA section. That's going to be your DNA part. And so A will connect to T. But whenever I have an A, it's going to be, be now be a U connecting because erosyl is replacing thymine. Okay, now, mRNA has, uh, now has a coded message for protein synthesis. It will move out of the nucleus and attach itself to the ribosome. When you study this, you studied using the diagram. That diagram that you've drawn yesterday, you draw that over and over again until you are able to draw the process without having to look at the, the paper anymore. And of course, as you draw it, you need to describe what's going to ha what, what is happening. Now, translation, we said tRNA now carries uh, amino acids. It connects to an amino acid. It carries um, and then matches the codon of the mRNA with its anticodon on the tRNA, and then brings the required amino acid to the ribosomes. And you do not need to know, you do not need to memorize the amino acid codon sequence. It will always be given to you. And then amino acids become attached to one another with peptide bonds. Just one mistake that a lot of people make in this is they remember peptide and they remember polypeptide chain. And then they say it's a polypeptide bond. It's not a polypeptide bond. It's a peptide bond that forms a polypeptide chain. Poly means many. It's not many bonds. It's a single bond. So you have a peptide bond that forms um, that that forms the polypeptide chain, and then that polypeptide chain is going to become a protein, and it's going to fold and become a protein, and that's what we want. So let's go through this process step by step again. Amino acids. Okay. So amino acids are the bricks or the building blocks of proteins. Okay, so each three nucleotides uh, forms a, um, a code for one amino acid. And on the DNA, we call that a base triplet. On the mRNA, we're going to call those nucleotides, so three nucleotides, we call it a codon. And on the tRNA, we're going to call it an anticodon. Okay, so um, then. A protein consists out of monomers called amino acids, and it's going to be in each protein, there's going to be at least 50 amino acids. Um, 
there's 20 different amino acids. It's like letters making up the alphabet. So those letters make up the protein or those amino acids make up the protein, just like the alphabet letters makes up words or um, in the end sentences. Long chains of amino acids make up a polypeptide chain and the chain folds to give it a three dimensional shape. We can see it over there. Then, and that then becomes a protein. So a polypeptide chain becomes a protein once it folds into a three-dimensional shape. As I said to you, there's about 20 different amino acids and it's like letters of the alphabet that makes up the proteins. And the sequence of amino acids is going to determine what type of protein we get. Okay, sequencing of a protein is determined by the base triplet on the DNA that we see over there. And there's a base triplet, there's a base triplet, there's a base triplet that's gonna be coded into a codon on the mRNA, which then links to the tRNA, anticodon, anticodon, and then that gives us a specific amino acid in the sequence of my polypeptide chain that's gonna become a protein, okay? Please go watch the animations. The animations illustrate this much better than I can explain it here. Um, each gene on the DNA codes for a protein and three consecutive DNA bases is called uh, a base triplet and codes for one amino acid. Steps, okay. Um, uh, some of the confusion that also happens when you guys are describing it on paper is that you guys swap the two processes around or you swap the name of the two processes around and you say uh, then you put translation before transcription don't do that remember this is just an easy way to remember it. transcription when we're making a movie we make a script first and then we can translate the movie into other languages so it's transcription first translation second Know the diagrams, even um, uh, and the one from the month gap book is very good. So use that one. Okay, so let's go through the process of transcription and translation once more here. Okay, DNA, there you see it's winded up, it unwinds. DNA unwinds and then it unzips. So unwind and unzip. One DNA strand acts as a template. So you have a template. Loose nucleotides bond to the DNA template and form my, anti, my codons on the mRNA. mRNA leaves the nucleus and remember to tell, uh, to, uh, to mention that they bond in a complementary fashion or that we get for every A we're gonna get a U, for every T, we're gonna get an A, for every C, we're gonna get a G, for every G, we're gonna get a C on the mRNA. It leaves the nucleus and goes and attaches to the ribosome. That was transcription and now it's translation. In translation, the tRNA brings an amino acid to the ribosome, connects to the mRNA using its anticodon, anticodon, leaves the amino acid, which bonds with a peptide bond to the next amino acid, and then it leaves the ribosome to go and watch and fetch more amino acid. It, this whole process forms a um, polypeptide chain, which becomes the protein. Okay, let's go through it again. We, we're getting this, we're repeating this over and over again uh, because what we're doing is we're putting this into our long-term memory. Okay, so DNA never leaves the nucleus. So protein synthesis happens outside the nucleus on the ribosome. So mRNA will take the message from the DNA, leave the nucleus and go to the ribosome. How does it do that? Okay, so um, the, uh, DNA acts as a template for the mRNA to form. So we have the DNA that needs to unwind and then unzip. 
uh, the weak hydrogen bond break to unzip and the DNA acts as a template. One strand of the DNA acts as a template. And then we get mRNA forming from loose nucleotides that sits on top of that DNA template. And what there's a, a, an enzyme that controls this, it's called RNA polymerase. Okay, so free floating RNA nucleotides are built complementary onto the mRNA from the DNA, and single RNA M M M a strand is formed. Three nitrogenous bases makes up a codon that codes for a specific amino acid. And then we get these tables over here. And this is going to be common in the questions that you have to answer. And you, uh, let me just show you how it works. Let's say, for example, my codon is, um, let's make it AUC. Then I go and I take a look. First position, A. Okay, so I'm busy with that section over there. U, I'm busy with that section there. And then I choose the last one, C. So I'm going to have LLE, LLE, LLE as my amino acid. And so that's how you use a codon table. Just be careful that you try and trick you sometimes. So instead of giving a, a codon table, they can give you an anti-codon table. So just read properly at what they're actually giving you when they're asking you to decode from a codon or anticodon onto uh, an amino acid. People, uh, remember it's always complementary pairing. You have to mention it. G connects to C, A connects to U, and D connects to A in translation. And then, of course, again, the same process in transcription. Okay, then translation. Here we see translation. This is the mRNA now sitting on top of the ribosome or sitting inside the ribosome. We have the tRNA bringing its specific amino acid um, and the anticodon fits onto the codon. Yeah, I can see the TTA fits onto AAU. And what did they do wrong here? Is this a T? No, that's not a T. That's supposed to be A. It's supposed to be UUA. So apologies for that. There's a, there's a mistake in the diagram. It's supposed to be UUA and not TTA. And it brings up, it actually brings in the amino acid. We can see peptide bonds are forming between the amino acids to form a polypeptide chain that is going to, in the end, um, fold into a three-dimensional shape to make up a protein, okay? Okay, at the end of the process, we normally get what we call a stop codon. So in your, in your DNA table, you'll see there's gonna be certain stop codons. So that's a codon that says to, to all of the enzymes, this is where the protein stops. This is where the polypeptide chain is, has to stop. So there's actually a codon controlling that. Okay, so here's the process explained again. DNA unwinds, DNA unzips. One DNA strand is used as a template for forming the mRNA from new nucleotides, and they, they bond together in a complementary fashion. A connects to U, T, uh, then we have, um, you know the fashion. In, in, it's T in, um, in DNA, but it's U in RNA, and then C and G, they, they bond together complementary. And then, of course, we have the mRNA leaving the nucleus, going to the ribosome, and then we, in the ribosome from there, we get the anticodon fitting onto the, the codon of the mRNA and leaving its amino acid to form a polypeptide chain, which is going to become a protein. 
please go and watch the animations. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot show it to you as well as I do in the animations that are put in the videos in Google Classroom. Guys, that is it for today's lesson. That is it for today's lesson. Please go watch the videos. You have to complete that worksheet under lesson five. You have to complete question 3.3 .3 of the 2017 paper two, May, June. So please go and do that as well. And can I ask before we end off today's lesson, are there any questions that you guys would like to ask? You're also free to put it into the chat box or to raise your hand or just, if nobody's talking, then you can just ask your question. Okay, in that case, if I'm not having any questions yet so far, I'm checking the chat box and I see no questions so far. I'm not hearing anyone. I'm not seeing anybody putting up their hands. So thank you for this lesson. Please go watch the videos. Please go complete all of the worksheets under lesson five and lesson six that you need to do. Guys, I'm giving you tomorrow's lesson to complete it. So I'm not having a Zoom tomorrow. We will discuss these answers on Monday. So we're not having a Zoom tomorrow. I did hear somebody. Is there a question? I'm not sure if your internet speed is just a bit slow. I will be posting this recording as well, like I always do. Okay, thank you in that case. Thank you very much for the lesson. I will see you on Monday.